Welcome back to Story Scan. Today, we're unraveling the intricate plot of 2014 movie The Fault in Our Stars. Let's dive in. A young girl named Hazel Grace Lancaster, played by Shailene Woodley, is lying on the grass and looking at the stars. She says that we can decide how to tell sad stories. She explains that even though some people might make it sound less sad or say that a Peter Gabriel song can make everything better, that's not really true. Hazel is battling stage four, thyroid cancer, and is always seen with an oxygen tank and a cannula in her nose to help her breathe. Her mother Franny, Laura Dern, Father Michael, Sam Trammell, and Dr. Maria, Ana Dela Cruz, encourage her to join a cancer support group at a church known as the Literal Heart of Jesus. The group is led by a man named Patrick, Mike Babiglia, a testicular cancer survivor who, despite being divorced and living with his parents, maintains a positive outlook because he's still alive. Franny hopes that Hazel will make friends at the group, but as Hazel points out, the only thing worse than dying from cancer is having a child who dies from it. On a certain day, while attending the group, Hazel encounters Augustus Waters, Ansel Elgort. Throughout the meeting, Gus can't help but gaze at Hazel. Patrick first addresses Gus's friend Isaac, Nat Wolf, who had an eye tumor and now has a glass eye, but he is grateful for his extremely attractive girlfriend Monica. When it's Gus's turn to speak, he reveals that he's in remission from osteosarcoma after losing half of his right leg. He now uses a prosthetic. When Patrick asks him about his fears, Gus admits that he's afraid of oblivion. Hazel tells him that one day, Everything and everyone will disappear and be forgotten. She says if this scares him, he should just not think about it. After their meeting, Hazel waits for her mom and Gus comes to talk to her. They see Isaac and Monica kissing and touching each other, saying always to show they will always love each other. Gus tells Hazel this and then says she's beautiful. He puts a cigarette in his mouth, which Hazel doesn't like. But Gus explains he never actually smokes it. He does this to show he's not afraid of it. He then asks Hazel to come and watch a movie with him. While driving fast to his house, Gus asks Hazel about her experience with cancer. Through flashbacks, Hazel shares that she was diagnosed at 13. She tried all the treatments, but they didn't work at first. Her lungs filled with water, and she had to be in the ICU. Then, suddenly, a medication started working really well, which was amazing. When they get to Gus's house, they meet his parents. In the basement, Gus wants to know more about Hazel not just her cancer. She says she's nothing special, but he doesn't agree. He gives her his favorite book, based on a video game called Counterinsurgents. Hazel suggests her favorite book, An Imperial Affliction. It's about a girl with leukemia, but Hazel explains it's not just a story about cancer. Hazel is waiting for Gus to call her back. After a few days, he texts her because he has finished reading An Imperial Affliction. He is surprised that the book ends suddenly, maybe because the main character, Anna, dies while telling the story. Hazel leaves dinner to talk to Gus on the phone, but they hear Isaac singing loudly in the background. Gus asks Hazel to come over. There, she learns that Monica broke up with Isaac before his surgery to remove his other eye, as Monica can't deal with it. Gus thinks Isaac is acting crazy, but Hazel thinks Isaac's reaction to the breakup is normal. Gus lets Isaac destroy his basketball trophies to let out his anger. Meanwhile, Gus and Hazel discuss the book's ending. Hazel shares that she has sent many letters to the book's author, Peter Van Houten, wanting to know what happens next like what happens to Anna's mom, her relationship with the Dutch tulip man, and Anna's pet hamster, Sisyphus. One night while talking on the phone, Gus tells Hazel that he found the email of Van Houten's assistant. He sent a message to the author, Peter Van Houten. Van Houten replied, thanking Gus and Hazel for liking his book, An Imperial Affliction, but said he won't write more about it. Hazel is surprised that Gus got an answer with just one email. She decides to email Van Houten herself with her questions. Soon, Hazel gets a reply from Van Houten. He thanks her too, and even invites her to visit him in Amsterdam. Hazel is excited and tells her mom, but her mom worries about the cost. Hazel reads the email to Gus, and they talk until 1 a.m. When Hazel says it's time to end the call, they both say, okay. Gus then suggests that, okay, can be their special word, like, always. Hazel shares with Gus about the invitation from Van Houten. Gus suggests asking the genies, a group like Make-A-Wish, to make her wish to go there come true. Hazel says she already used her wish to go to Disney World. Gus feels it's a bit ordinary to use a wish for that. Later, Gus visits Hazel's house with orange tulips. He's wearing a shirt of Rick Smith's, a Dutch basketball player. He then takes her on a picnic to a park with a big skeleton structure called Funky Bones, which looks like a Dutch artist's work. Gus jokes that he's brought all his dates here, which is why he's still a virgin. He even draws a circle in the dirt, showing a small area for 18-year-old boys with one leg, like him. During the picnic, Gus reveals he talked to the genies and they agreed to grant his wish to take Hazel to Amsterdam. Hazel is overjoyed. One night, Hazel wakes up and can't breathe because there's fluid in her lungs. 
Her parents quickly take her to the hospital. Gus comes too but has to wait outside because only family members are allowed in. The doctors drain the fluid from Hazel's lungs and she gets better. But after talking with the doctors, they say she's too sick to travel anywhere. Hazel remembers a time when she was younger in the ICU. Her mom, Franny, told her it was okay to let go. Then, Hazel remembers seeing her mom crying to her dad, Michael, saying she wouldn't be a mom anymore. Hazel feels really sad and stops answering calls and texts from Gus. She sits near a swing in the backyard, which her dad made for her when she was little. Then, she calls Gus and tells him how upset she is. Gus comes to see her, and they sit on the swing together. He says that even if she stays away, he still cares about her a lot. Hazel feels like she's like a grenade that will explode and cause harm around her. Because she doesn't want to hurt Gus, she thinks it's best if they just stay friends. A few days later, Leidwich, Van Houten's assistant, sends an email to Hazel. She says the invitation to come to Amsterdam is still open and they can go there next week. Hazel calls her mom to tell her. Her mom reveals that she and Hazel's dad planned this as a surprise. They really are going to Amsterdam. Hazel is so happy she hugs her mom. Then, she texts Gus about it. Gus texts back, saying things are going great for Hazel. Hazel then looks at her chest, where her lungs are, and silently asks them to stay okay for at least one more week. Gus comes in a fancy limo to get Hazel and her mom, Franny. He wants to make the trip special. On the airplane, Gus is a bit scared because it's his first time flying. But once the plane is in the air, he gets really excited. Hazel gives Gus a small kiss on the cheek, and Franny thinks they're very cute together. Hazel and Gus have a great first day in Amsterdam. They go on a boat ride through a canal and have dinner at a Dutch restaurant called Orangey. Hazel wears a pretty blue dress that her mom, Franny, gave her. Franny thinks Gus looks very handsome in his fancy outfit, and Gus is amazed by how beautiful Hazel looks. At the restaurant, they are greeted as Mr. and Mrs. Waters. They try Dom Perignon champagne for the first time and really like it. During dinner, Gus tells Hazel he loves her, which makes her very happy. Later, the waiter brings more champagne and tells them that Van Houten is paid for their dinner. The next day, Hazel and Gus visit Van Houten. Leidwich, Latte Verbeek, his assistant, opens the door and lets them in. They see lots of unopened fan mail on the floor. Van Houten, Willem Dafoe, is in his pajamas, drinking. They sit down to ask him questions, but instead, Van Houten plays loud Swedish rap music. Hazel tries to ask about the book, like what happens to Anna's mom and the Dutch Tulip Man, but Van Houten doesn't give clear answers, just confusing talk. Gus asks if Van Houten is making fun of them. Van Houten says mean things about Gus's cancer. He gets worse, not answering Hazel's questions and being rude about their illnesses. Hazel and Gus leave angrily. Van Houten asks why Hazel cares so much about those questions. Hazel tells him angrily to go away. After seeing Van Houten's bad behavior, Leidwich feels bad and decides to take Hazel and Gus to the Anne Frank house. The house doesn't have an elevator, so Hazel has to walk up many stairs and climb a ladder, which makes it hard for her to breathe. They reach a part of the house where there's a recording of and Frank's diary being read aloud. And Frank's words are about finding beauty and happiness even when things are tough. Inspired by this, Hazel and Gus kiss for the first time. People watching, including Leidwich, clap for them. Later, Hazel and Gus go back to Gus's hotel room and are intimate for the first time. Hazel leaves Gus a drawing. It shows a big circle of virgins and a smaller circle inside it for 18-year-old boys with one leg, which Gus is part of. On their last day in Amsterdam, Hazel and Gus have breakfast with Franny, Hazel's mom. Then, they go for a walk by themselves. They sit on a bench, and Gus shares something important with Hazel. He tells her that while she was in the ICU, he had pain in his hip and went for a scan. Hazel realizes what he's about to say. Gus explains that the skin showed lots of signs of cancer, meaning it has come back and spread all over his body. Hazel is very sad and cries, resting her head on his shoulder. Gus tries to cheer her up by joking that they could kiss. Hazel, Gus, and Franny go back home to Indianapolis, and Michael, Hazel's dad, picks them up from the airport. After a few days, Hazel and Gus spend time with their friend Isaac. Isaac is now blind and tells them that Monica, his girlfriend, hasn't talked to him since they broke up. To make Isaac feel better, Hazel and Gus get some eggs. They take Isaac to Monica's house and let him throw the eggs at her car. In the middle of the night, Gus calls Hazel and asks her to come to a gas station to help him. When Hazel gets there, she finds Gus in his car. He's covered in his own mucus and vomit and has an infection in his stomach from his G-tube. He wanted to buy a new pack of cigarettes because he lost his old one. Hazel calls for an ambulance even though Gus asked her not to. Soon, the ambulance comes and takes Gus to the hospital. Gus gets more cancer treatment until the doctors stop his chemotherapy. Now, Hazel can't visit him in his hospital room because she's not a family member. Gus has to use a wheelchair to move around. 
Hazel takes him to the park with the Funky Bones replica for a picnic. Gus talks about wanting to make a big impact on the world before he dies. He feels he needs to live an extraordinary life. Hazel is a bit upset by this. She tells him he doesn't need to do something big because she and his parents love him, and that's enough. Gus apologizes, and they have champagne together. One evening, Gus invites Hazel to come to the literal heart of Jesus' church. He asks her to bring a eulogy that she wrote for him. When Hazel is about to leave, her parents are preparing dinner and try to stop her. Hazel gets into an argument with them. She's worried that they will be left alone after she's gone. She remembers her mom once saying she won't be a mom anymore if Hazel dies. Her mom, Franny, is surprised Hazel remembers this and tells her that she was wrong. Franny says she will always be Hazel's mom, even if Hazel dies. Both of her parents tell her they will always love her, no matter what. Franny also shares that she's taking classes to become a social worker. She wants to help other families going through tough times like theirs. Hearing this, Hazel feels relieved. She knows her parents will be okay and find purpose even after she's gone. Hazel goes to the church to meet Gus and Isaac. Gus has planned a pre-funeral because he wants to experience his own funeral. Isaac gives a eulogy first, adding a bit of humor. He says if he ever gets robot eyes, he would refuse them because he doesn't want to see a world without Gus. Then Hazel speaks. She starts by talking about her love story with Gus. She then talks about math, explaining how there are endless numbers between zero and one and so many different kinds of infinities. Hazel says she is grateful for the special, limited time they had together, their own infinity. They both tell each other, I love you one last time. Eight days later, Gus passes away. Hazel's family gets a phone call in the middle of the night telling them the sad news. When Hazel's parents come into her room, she understands immediately what has happened and starts to cry. She remembers a time during her treatment when a nurse asked her to say how much pain she was in, on a scale from 1 to 10. Hazel said her pain was a 9. The nurse thought Hazel was being strong by not saying 10, but Hazel explained she wasn't trying to be brave then. She was keeping her 10 for a really painful moment like this one, when Gus died. Gus's funeral happens, and Hazel and her parents attend. While the preacher is talking, Hazel is surprised to see Van Houten there. When it's Hazel's turn to speak, she tells everyone she is Gus's girlfriend. She places a pack of cigarettes on Gus's coffin among the flowers and gives a new eulogy that she feels is more suitable for everyone at the funeral. After the funeral, Hazel decides to drive home by herself. Van Houten gets into her car. She finds out that he was in contact with Gus before Gus died. Gus had told Van Houten he could make things right by visiting Hazel and answering her questions. Van Houten tells Hazel that the character Anna in his book was based on his own daughter, who was eight years old and died of leukemia. Before Hazel angrily tells him to leave her car, Van Houten gives her a letter. Hazel crumples it up and throws it away. As she drives off, she sees him drinking from a flask in her car's mirror. After Gus dies, Hazel's dad tries to make her feel better. Then, Isaac, their friend, comes to see Hazel. He tells her that Gus really loved her a lot and talked about her so much that it sometimes got annoying. Isaac asks Hazel if she read the letter from Van Houten. Hazel then finds out that the letter she threw away in the car wasn't from Van Houten, but was actually written by Gus. The letter is a special message for Hazel, written by Gus before he died. We can imagine Gus's voice reading it. He talks about a time when Hazel was in the ICU and he quietly visited her, holding her hand while she was asleep. He thought about their time together. In the letter, Gus says he really admires Hazel's beauty and personality. He also writes that people get to choose who they let into their hearts. Gus was happy with his choice of Hazel, and he hoped Hazel felt the same about choosing him. He finishes the letter by asking, okay, Hazel Grace? The movie ends with Hazel lying in the grass, looking at the stars, and she answers, okay.